might be kind of surprising that this is the first time we've, we've thought of this, but this being a driver's car, and the whole purpose of the car being the enjoyment of the guy sitting behind the steering wheel, um, we put the driving position as the very first priority when we're building the car. Uh, typically, you, you notice on a lot of sports cars, they'll actually have a slightly awkward driving position. The pedals kind of be offset to one side if there's some big tire. Uh, a lot of times the steering wheel is actually not directly in front of you, but some weird package constraint force it a little bit offset. And uh, people won't notice it. And this is true, you don't uh, often don't consciously notice that the seating position is a little bit weird, but subconsciously you do notice it. Because when you get in a car where it is in the right position, you immediately recognize that you feel at home and you feel like everything is working the way it should. Uh, if you drive an, uh, an NC and an ND back to back, the previous generation and this generation, um, actually the NC pedals were, were offset which is something I never consciously noticed until I drove the two cars side by side. So by setting the, the driving position as a first priority, we then forced everything else in the car to sort of conform to, to, to what it needed to, to get out of our way. So um, we got the steering wheel directly in front of you, the gauge bus was perfectly centered, the pedal position uh, is exactly straight ahead. Um, the, 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 the cup holders are an awkward position to reach when you're drinking because <coughs> shifting is more important than drinking. Uh, the previous car we had the shift the, the cup holders in a really convenient drinking position, and if you were drinking something, you could shift gears, right? So let's just kind of reimagine what our priorities are in this car, and realize that it's a sports car. Um, we to sort of limit the, the cup holder trade-off, and I hate to go off into a cup holder discussion on sports cars, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, we actually made them removable because you're not always drinking something. Um, and so they, they can mount in behind your shoulder, and you can take them out and put them in the glove box, which is over your shoulder here. Or if you don't have a passenger, you can stick it up on the right side. If you have a passenger, it's going to be in their knee and they're going to hate you. Uh, but we sort of just give you the flexibility to, to, to not let the cup holder rule the interior of the car. Um, we also wanted to move the driving position a little bit relative to where it was before. We wanted to put the driver a little bit lower, which I think is, I don't have to explain why we wanted to do that. Uh, but we also wanted to move them closer to the center of the car. Uh, and there's, there's two reasons for that. One is so that the, the body motion feels more natural. Uh, if you're in the middle of the car, roll feels like roll. If you're sitting way off on the side of the car, roll is moving your body up and down. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a much less connected feeling. You'll notice if you, if you suddenly drive a right-hand drive car, the relationship between right and left turns and up and down suddenly gets reversed and you can become very conscious of it. Uh, and that's sort of, that's a good way to sort of illustrate to yourself uh, how, much, uh, how much that motion comes up and down when you're sitting off-center. Um, so moving the driver inboard 15 millimeters and also pulling the windshield back a little farther uh, gives the other benefit, which is that we can see farther into a corner. We're not blocked by the A pillar quite as far. Um, and that's obviously really essential for, for driving on the kind of roads that we want to drive on. Um, we also push the hood down uh, over an inch. Uh, this obviously it looks a lot better that way, but also this gives you a, a view of the road closer to your feet. Uh, and the closer the road is to you, uh, as it's going by, the faster the car feels. So it just really improves the sense of speed. You notice a lot of mid-engine cars feel really fast. 911s with a hood that just drops down feels really fast. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was growing up, my dad had a first-gen RX-7, uh, and that car had a whopping 100 horsepower, but it felt like a rocket because the hood just dropped away and you could see the road right there. It just had this incredible sense of speed. Um, so that, that was uh, an essential part of this design, too. Um, <coughs> Rod mentioned the interior being bigger. You notice there's a couple of really tall guys working on this car. Um, so we're really sensitive to that last inch uh, of space. Um, the SAE interior measurements are done in a certain driving position in a certain, certain way. So if you measure it in that very strict sense, uh, the dimensions are all the same. But take it from a tall guy, it's much bigger inside. Um, the reality is in, in the NC, um, your head uh, would my head would actually, my hair would rub on the top all the time. And there was a steel bar, and one of the bows at the top was right over a tall driver's head. So if you go over a bump, you'd get rewarded with a smack on the nog of the steel bar. Uh, we've moved the bow so the, 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 the rear bow is pushed back a little bit farther behind your head, and the bow that used to be over your head is now incorporated into this aluminum panel that's on the leading edge of the, of the top, which is a little bit farther forward and a lot thinner. So now if you, if you are able to actually get up high enough nice cloth kit, you can barely notice it. Um, the other place that was kind of constricted on the old car uh, is when you're trying to heel toe, uh, you rotate your knee into the steering wheel. Uh, so we made the steering wheel diameter a little bit smaller, we uh, extended
extended the, the range of the tilt so we can go up a little bit higher if it is running into your knee. Um, so we get about 12 millimeters or more space uh, around your knee for that. Um, and also the seat can go back one more click. When you, when you have the seat slider all the way back, you run it up against the rear bulkhead uh, and that forces you to sit more upright, which of course takes away some headroom. Uh, and with a thinner seat, we were able to get one more click of adjustment, which, you know, ignore everything else about the car, that click of backrest adjustment is the best thing that we've done in this car, <laughs> I believe. Um, the seats are a new, uh, a new structure that we've been working on for, for, I think I've been hearing about these for 10 years now, uh, trying to get them to work out. We finally got them to, to work. Uh, the payoff is, is huge. Um, instead of using the, the old uh, wave spring and foam arrangement that's in your grandmother's couch, uh, we now have a high tension cloth mesh uh, that we can set at different tensions to different places so we can have more lumbar support, a little bit softer around the shoulders and all that. Kind of like one of those fancy office chairs, you know, that's just a, a, a cloth stretched across a tight frame. Um, you, if, if you, before you get in the car, if you flip the backrest forward, put a hand in the front and the back of the backrest and push them together, you can feel your hand right through it. There is nothing but three layers of cloth there. Um, the result is, obviously, it's a lot thinner and lighter, uh, so we can we can package more interior space into a smaller car. It's also a lot more comfortable. Uh, the seat kind of conforms to your back. And we've had a lot of people who get in the car and feel the, the bolsters hugging them perfectly and go, wow, this seat really fits me. Man, if anybody's bigger than me, they're not going to fit in this car. It doesn't matter how big the guy is, they all, everybody says the same thing, that they're the biggest guy. It's because the seat's conforming to your back properly. Um, the other thing about this design is, is when you're going around the corner, the way it supports your body is a lot more linear. That's what this, this chart is struggling to, uh, to, to illustrate. Um, this is a cornering load on, on the x-axis and the uh, body deflection, the driver's body uh, movement side to side on the vertical axis. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the, the blue line, this is for the NC, which has a traditional, you know, flat back bolster, flat back and two side bolsters. And what happens when you go in the corner is you, you stick to the back a little bit and then you just flop over and you hit the bolster and you stop moving. Uh, and as we can see, you know, right here around 70 newtons, you, you solid against the bolster and you can keep cornering and you don't move anymore. Um, the, the new seat, you move very linearly with cornering G. And so you basically don't notice your movement because it's just completely in tune with, with the, the loads that are coming in from, from the car. So if I hadn't told you any of this stuff, hopefully you wouldn't have even noticed the seat at all, which is really the best thing you can say about a seat. Um, there's one uh, other detail. Um, the previous seat had a height adjuster. Um, and we actually, to, to, to save a little bit of weight and save a little bit of space, we got rid of the height adjuster and instead simply mounted the slider to the angle. So as you slide it back, it goes down. As you slide it forward, it goes up. Because it turns out shorter people want to be higher and taller people want to be lower. So that's simple, right? <laughs> Uh, and instead we put a, uh, there's a, a knob down here by your thigh uh, that will raise the, raise and lower the leading edge of the, the seat bottom so you can get a little thigh support. So a long, a long drive, you can just dial that in and kind of spread the load across, uh, across your thigh. It makes it much more comfortable on a long trip. Um, this is just sort of a random detail just to, to make a point about how many things that you wouldn't expect uh, had to be redesigned to get those driver and passenger 15 millimeters closer to the center. Um, this is the power plant frame. Uh, if the original first version of the power plant frame was a C-shaped cross-section like this, it was attached to the transmission and dip with one big screw bolt that went through. And uh, for the NC, we changed that to a Z-shaped cross-section, which is much easier to put together uh, because you have two short bolts on the bottom, two short bolts on the top. Um, that's, uh, as a guy who pulls uh, you know, the transmissions in and out of race cars all the time, I can tell you that's much easier uh, than the old way we did it. Um, the problem with that is it doesn't package in the, in the tunnel quite as well. This is the exhaust system of the drive shaft and the uh, and that uh, power plant frame. So to make the tunnel narrower so we could make the driver and passenger closer together, um, we went back to the C-shaped cross section and made it a little taller so it goes up over the drive shaft. Uh, and you can see there uh, in the middle here how the tall section is kind of leaned over. That's to make it really narrow right there where the seats are. Um, so just one of, one of a million things that had to move uh, to get the driver happy. Um, we also rearranged the, the suspension geometry around the driving position as well. Um, when you're, uh, when you hit the brakes, you know, obviously the brake, the, the car dives, um, but exactly how it dives uh, depends on a lot of things. It's the, the center of gravity height, the wheelbase, um, but also the suspension geometry. We can angle the control arms and put some, some sort of anti-squat force uh, in the front, some anti-lift uh, force pulling down in the back. Um, and then by adjusting those, those uh, suspension angles, you can uh, actually move the center of pitch. Um, the NC, the center of 
pitch was right around the middle of the car. But if you look at it, the driver's head is actually behind the center of the car. So that meant that when the driver hits the brakes on the NC, they'd actually go up, which is a very kind of unstable and settling feeling. So we put a little more anti-lift in the back to hold the back down and move the center of pitch back to about the driver's shoulder. So now the brake dive happens kind of right around you. And that was sort of the key to all the suspension tuning is to get the car to move right around the driver and make it feel very natural. Um, a convertible top, uh, this is the same sort of Z-fold arrangement that the, the NC had, which is a very simple, quick, uh, efficient way to fold the top. But we really wanted to get the effort of putting the top up and down, uh, uh, reduce that effort a lot so that you could really put it down without hesitation. In the real world, you don't always want to have the top down half the time you're driving on the freeway next to a semi, and that's not really any fun. Um, but we don't want you to leave the top off all the time and not enjoy the two minutes of your 10 minute drive that can actually be done with the top down. So we want to make it so easy you can just drop it without hesitation and throw it back up and not worry about it. So what we did is we, we made the top frame lighter. Uh, the frame is actually aluminum now. Um, we reduced the friction in, the, in the, uh, all the, the hinges and all the joints in the, that frame. We also put a big assist spring in it so that when you unlatch it from the back, it'll pop up so that you can just kind of reach up and grab it and pull it forward. Um, the previous car, when you release it, it would pop up just a little bit. You kind of had to reach back behind you and pry it out here. And this little bit of, of effort was really high. Um, so this is actually measuring shoulder strain versus top travel. Uh, and this, this reach right back here is, is where we had the most effort on the old top. So that assist spring just kind of pushes you right past that. You just reach up and grab it and slam it down with, with latch it with a single latch. Um, we also wired in the, the uh, power windows to automatically lower a little bit. Uh, when you're putting it up or down, uh, because the, the drag of the window seals against the window will make it hard to, to release. Uh, previously, you had to do that manually, which was not really that hard to do this, but you had to know about that and had to understand that's how it works. So making that automatic is now just a, a single, uh, single very quick input to put the top up or down. Um, I mentioned the aluminum panel on the roof uh, right here on the leading edge. This is a, a, a wind noise trick. Um, when the wind is uh, going over the windshield, it has to turn uh, to go flat across the top. That sharp corner tends to cause air to separate a little bit, and it'll cause some buffeting. And if you just have a piece of cloth stretched across that, that buffeting is going to buffet the cloth and turn it into a speaker, basically, uh, thin noise to the cabin. So um, we put a rigid panel underneath the, the cloth there. You wouldn't notice it was there unless I told you. Um, and that dramatically reduces the wind noise. Um, we wanted to reduce the, the sort of MBH profile in the car without adding a bunch of sound editing, without making the car heavy. Um, so we took two different strategies, but the road noise uh, is all coming up through the tires. It's input coming into the tires and vibrating the tire and the wheel and coming into the suspension and driving it through, through the solid parts of the body. Um, and instead of trying to isolate that with sound editing, <clears throat> we just did a lot of work of analyzing the natural frequency of all those parts that the sound was traveling through to try to, to, try to keep them from exciting and amplifying any of that sound. Um, and then uh, for the wind noise, uh, in, in addition to that uh, trick with the, with the leading edge, uh, with the aluminum panel, on the GT cars, we also put an extra layer of cloth. This is uh, like a headliner layer in there that's got an extra layer of padding. Uh, so this, this chart here is showing you, um, we, we tend to measure MBH on, on two axes because the road noise and wind noise are coming in from totally separate places in our measurement scales. So the frequency range that, that tends to be road noise, we measure just in straight dB. Uh, the wind noise we measure on a scale called an articulation index, which is a, a set of frequencies that are most commonly used in, in human speech. Uh, so these are the, the noises that will make it more difficult to have a conversation or listen to the radio, um, assuming you're listening to humans on the radio. Uh, and uh, so we, we are able to sort of focus our wind noise efforts on the, the most important frequencies. Uh, and that's where you can see the gap 